Welcome back, my students, to a brand new episode of Comic Class. In today's lesson, we're going to be looking at Batman's The Abyss story arc, which is by uh, Joshua Williamson. This takes place right after Fear State. So, if you haven't already, go check out the full story review on Fear State um, in the description down below. You can, you can check out that video. And if you have already, um, I hope you guys enjoy this video as we go over the entire story of Batman The Abyss story arc. And yeah, without further ado, let's jump right to today's story let's go so this story basically starts off with gotham city basically celebrating the defeat of the scarecrow and the saving of gotham city from the fear state basically and it's pretty awesome we get to see everyone kind of like just enjoying themselves congratulating uh, Batman and them, you know, the people that saved Gotham City. And while that's going on, we get to see that two crooks, basically criminals, are trying to do a robbery, basically, while everyone is out celebrating, because they feel like this will be like an easy uh, win for them, basically. They'll be able to get away with this robbery. But one of the criminals basically looks up and thinks he spots Batman when the other criminal just tells him that he's seen things and that he's paranoid. But it's shown to us that Batman is indeed on that rooftop. And it's a really cool uh, splash page showing Batman off. I thought that was really cool how that was drawn. So the criminals basically run off and they go and find where the police are and they basically tell them to arrest them that they rather get arrested uh, peacefully than get beat up by Batman. So I thought that was pretty funny. Very cool comedy scene as the cops basically put them into the car and say, you know, to tell them all about it when they get to the jail, basically. So that, that was funny. Um, we jump into seeing that Batman's basically just um, patrolling the rooftops, trying to find out if any crime is going on uh, in the city while the celebration is taking place. We get a conversation between him and Oracle, basically telling him that he should basically chill with the rest of the people, but she does find a crime with him, basically, as there's this giant billionaire's uh, ballroom, basically, party going on where they dress up as the villains of Gotham, as Oracle tells Batman that he's not going to like what he sees there, he's not going to like it, basically, and relays this information to him, basically, of what's happening with these billionaires dressing up as his Rhodes Gallery, and it's a really cool scene, we get to see Batman basically head off to go uh, find out if any of his real Rhodes Gallery is in there, and it's revealed to us that Firefly basically is the real Firefly, and he's basically going to try taking these people hostage or take their money or something like that, basically try to rob them of their money. And before, you know, they can do anything, the villains, uh, we get to see that Killer Croc basically starts attacking them. And he is showing hand-to-hand -hand combat skills that he usually doesn't show. And we get to see him basically lay hands on a ton of the different uh, Rhodes Gallery members. Eventually, Firefly hits Killer Croc with his, like, flamethrower type gun, his fire gun. And this melts away the costume and reveals that it's actually bad in underneath the costume as the I think Firefly points out that Killer Croc doesn't fight like that so now that's revealed that it's actually Batman Firefly tells either I think it's a Joker wannabe that's dressing up as him basically uh, to take on Batman and to you know he tells Batman give your anger and to this uh, Joker wannabe basically so this Joker wannabe basically attacks Batman and Batman makes quick work of him when the Joker wannabe basically says why aren't you using your fancy toys Batman uh, Batman basically just um, right hooks him and says that you're not worth a battery so I thought that was really cool so Firefly basically tries to escape and um, Batman basically grabs him with his grappling hook, grabs his uh, leg and tries to push him, push him down, pull him down basically. And Firefly claims that he's going to go nuclear, which is kind of crazy, I didn't know he had that type of firepower unless he's just, you know, bluffing. But uh, Batman picks up one of the freeze guns that I guess they had gotten from Mr. Freeze, or maybe Mr. Freeze was actually Mr. Freeze. But he uses this to basically chill out uh, Firefly's uh, fire gun, and then he just does another right hook to uh, knock him out as well. Uh, just like he did with the wannabe Joker earlier. 
and he basically saves the billionaires now the billionaires actually believe that this was all like a show for them so i thought that was really funny you even have one of the people dressed up as catwoman trying to seduce batman so i thought that was funny too now he has a really cool comedy moment with a little girl basically dressed up as punchline it's probably my favorite panel in um or page in the entire book um you know this volume basically and we can see that Batman basically meets his way out of there and basically uses a smoke bomb to basically make his getaway from all those billionaires dressed up as his Rose Gallery. And we get to see that he did indeed give the little girl the autograph that she wanted and she's very excited about it. Um, with it looks like her mother and her father possibly dressed up as Catwoman and the Riddler. So it's kind of weird, but um, pretty funny. But eventually we get to see that Batman is basically again looking over the city and we get this really cool page when oracle says what does he do usually in these moments of like peace or you know he doesn't have to worry about crime as much and we get this really cool page showing different things he's done with his uh, allies as well as his family and his you know friends and stuff and his uh, lover and father and stuff like that father figure with alfred that was a really cool scene because we get to see him with catwoman him with uh, superman and then him with alfred as well as i guess this will be like jason todd or damien i'm guessing jason todd though and then commissioner gordon um overlooking gotham with the uh, bats and no behind them uh just overall very cool page but another one of my favorites in this volume but we get to see basically that um uh, oracle says that her and nightwing are gonna have like a breakfast or something like that and they invite batman but batman tells them that they can't that he can't make it basically because something's basically gone down he's gonna have to leave town it's revealed to us that apparently batman inc has made a killing is that it calls them um they basically says that they murdered um somebody so batman has to go investigate and see what is at least happening with these people that are inspired by him and that he gave them the name batman Inc. so batman heads to a place called banesia i think or something like that and he goes in with his like bruce wayne persona and basically talks to some of the locals in their native language it seems so this it's pretty cool as the showcases Batman's versatility and even uh, knowing different languages. I thought that was really cool because you don't really get to see that a lot with Batman's character, but it is something he's able to do. This is we're introduced to a character called Detective Kaya, I think, or Kaya, and she's basically trying to figure out what's happened with the Batman Inc. people and why exactly they murdered this person that they murdered. So she goes to look at the crime scene and she's confronted by Batman. Um, I guess Bruce got into his suit and then went and confronted her so he wants to get some information on what exactly happened with his guys basically Batman Inc and why exactly they would murder somebody when that's one of his roles not to murder people so they basically have a conversation and it's revealed to Batman that there's a guy called Abyss that's been messing with the people of Banesia um and uh basically batman inc went to basically confront him and apparently in this battle they basically killed abyss and batman says that indeed they actually did kill him and they gonna need to find answers onto why they killed him so i thought that was really cool that just looking at the crime scene at as detective kaya basically says that that's impressive that batman's able to figure out all of this by just looking at the crime scene but he basically says that he needs to find out why they killed um, this guy, murdered this guy, basically. So before they can basically leave the scene, they're confronted by Lex Luthor, who has basically started funding Batman Inc., which uh, Detective Kaya basically is talking about, you know, a rich guy and... Uh, Bruce Wayne, well, you know, uh, Batman thinks that she's talking about Bruce Wayne, but she's not talking about Wayne, and she says, no, not Wayne, and it's revealed to us that she's talking about Lex Luthor, and it seems like Lex Luthor is basically funding and taking control of Batman Inc., and this makes Batman, like, super suspicious. But yeah, so jumping into the next part of the story, we get to see that we get a flashback to Alfred basically talking to Bruce, and they're basically talking about uh, Bruce using the Batman persona, and that he needs that Bruce needs to understand that just like you can have enemies in the dark, you can also have enemies in the light as well. 
So Batman and Lex Luthor basically confront each other and we get to see that Lex Luthor basically explains to Batman that he basically has taken up uh, Batman Inc. He's put them under his control, you know, his influence as you can see. He basically owns them now. And before Batman can get any information on him and uh, real quick we do get to see that Lex Luthor does explain to Detective Kaya that basically him and Batman do know each other so just to clear that up with her character she now knows that these two uh, know each other but before Batman can get answers to why exactly Lex Luthor has you know put Batman Inc. under him basically under his control um, the SWAT team basically comes in and they basically shoot on sight and try to kill Batman because they basically been ordered to basically shoot any Batman on sight. And of course this doesn't catch Batman off guard as he's used to uh, gunfire so he utilizes his gas bombs, you know, gas grenades to basically um, put a ton of smoke, smoke grenades I guess you could say to where he can basically deal with all the different gunmen and he basically does and leaves a note for uh detective kaya and basically tells her that you know he'll see her soon or something and let's basically tells kaya that he's basically going to leave her now and to let her know basically if they need any uh help or something or you know if they need him basically on Venetia. so i thought that was cool and we get to skip forward to a different point in time like you know a little later in the day i'm guessing where bruce meets up with let's luther and let's luther knows bruce is batman and so they basically are talking to each other and eventually uh you know let's luther is pouring them this glass of champagne that's actually like the last of its kind and goes for like so much money and he basically pours it out uh after he pours them both a glass or something like that um and basically just tries to show off his wealth and his uh uncaring nature i guess you could say for the things people find uh valuable or something like that and at least that's what i got from the scene but we get to hear let's basically talk about what nightwing is basically doing in his book which i don't read the nightwing book but I do know that apparently they're tackling a type of like billionaire story with Nightwing uh, utilizing that type of might to help people instead of uh, making like businesses and stuff like that being kind of like a capitalist. Um, he's, he's using it in a more like a socialist type way um, and basically let's calls him dumb for that or something or calls him soft and this basically gets Bruce mad and Bruce grabs uh, Let's Luther and then lets him go of course uh, whenever um, Let's basically says Bruce so he basically tells him that not to get emotional on him that he basically just wants him to basically prove that he's as good as he used to be and you know he should be wearing better clothes and stuff like that because if you remember I think it was in Joker War Bruce lost all of his money due to the Joker doing a plan that was made by the grand designer I think was his name or something or I don't know was it the grand designer or was it the dark designer but either way that villain I believe is the one that um made the plan to get rid of all Bruce Wayne's money so that basically was uh done they succeeded in that so Batman's basically having to work from the ground up so we get to see you know this interaction because of that and and Lex Luthor's thoughts on it but eventually um they're basically talking to each other about what they think is happening with Batman Inc and that apparently the um let's does think that they're innocent as well and we'll get more into this later on in the story and what exactly let's knows about batman inc and the whole situation with them murdering this guy basically that they murdered and he basically says that you know um you'll see him my way soon bruce uh, which kind of indicates that he knows more than what he's letting on about the whole situation now we jump into the police station with uh detective kaya and basically it's revealed to us that the body of the person that got killed by um the batman inc members basically has been stolen from where it was at and batman basically uh, connects to detective kaya and basically tells her they needs her to make a distraction for him as he analyzes the body of this person that uh was murdered by uh the batman inc members so 
uh, Detective Kaya basically buys him the time he needs, and Batman says that this is not uh, Abyss, which is the name of the villain uh, that they basically killed, or the guy that they basically killed, and he says that Abyss died two days ago, which she confirms correct, and he says that this body is months old, so something is accelerating in the body's decomposition, and before he can do anything, the body basically like spits out or like cries out uh, like this scream and this black liquid basically comes out of it and where Batman's at all the lights basically start uh, shorting out or blowing out I think they were just like shorting out and Batman's left in complete darkness and while he's in this darkness he basically says that this is something new and he basically activates different versions of vision on his cow being from night vision to infrared and that nothing he's doing even throwing a flash grenade is bringing any light into uh, where he basically is and he says that I can still see myself and then he tells Abyss basically so he kind of realizes that the Abyss basically is alive and that he's the one doing this he basically says nice trick but I'm used to fighting in the dark I should thank you for helping me prove Batman's innocence in the death of Abyss and this is where we just see Abyss basically make his debut and he basically tries to attack Batman and they get into a quick um, altercation they start fighting each other and we get to see that Abyss seems to have a good amount of hand-to-hand -hand combat skills and he, Batman basically is asking him if he basically works for Let's or something like that and Abyss just claims that he's a creature of the darkness and born in the shadows just like you. So we're seeing that he's kind of like emulating Batman or he sees himself similar to Batman, the same type of person as him or entity, I guess you say, because Batman's just be like a symbol in that. And he just says the voices in the dark are my only master when he responds to Batman's question about working for Let's. And we'll definitely get the confirmation if he does in a later portion of the story. But we get to see that Abyss lands a critical hit on Batman and basically dips out. He basically uh, escapes, leaving Batman basically cut on the side of his uh, ribs, basically, in his gut. Um, so basically, Kaya... Uh, Detective Kaya basically uh, finds Batman damaged in that and she says that they're going to have to find a way to um, get out of there you know and that the chief is putting the whole building uh, into lockdown and she says you need to get out of here now and Batman says I can't and it's revealed to us as Detective Kaya is surprised to see that Batman basically says it's too dark and She's surprised to see that Batman's basically blind. His whole eyes are basically pure black. And this is a really great cliffhanger for this issue. Um, just great. But jumping into the next portion of the story, we get to see that Detective Kaya basically finds a way to make the officers think that uh abyss's body is the one that she's uh pushing around basically in this body bag but once uh they're in the clear and they're inside of the police uh truck the or a police van uh batman basically uh bursts his way out of the body bag and we get to see that he's been able to get a little bit of help from detective kaya i guess in kind of like closing his uh stab wound but they're basically heading to her apartment to basically try to think about a way, you know, or figure out a way on what is at least happening with Abyss. We also get to see that Let's Luther apparently knows about Abyss um, because of what happened with the Batman Inc. members, but he also knows that Batman tried stealing the body of Abyss as well. And it seems like Let's has been prepared for what's going to happen when he gets to a confrontation with Abyss. So when the lights go off in his uh, laboratory or wherever he's at this building that he's in, he basically uh, is wearing an armor underneath his suit it seems or some type of nanotech. And he basically shows off a new suit that apparently he made to basically fight against Abyss. And he basically is prepared to fight against him. But we really get to see that, you know, um, as Let says, you really think I wouldn't be prepared for you. I made this suit for Batman in case he took my offer to join my Batman Inc. And if it is my Batman Inc., I wasn't the one who broke our deal, but I get it. So with this uh, lines of dialogue, we get to see that 
Let's let their nose about a bit, it's like more than what he lets on, and with, like I said, we'll get more of that confirmation later on in the story. But he basically is about to get into a fight with Abyss, and at the end he basically says, show yourself Abyss, and Abyss attacks Let's Luther, but we don't get to see the outcome, which kind of sucks. But, um, going into what's happening with Batman, Batman is in uh, Detective Kaya's apartment, and they're basically talking to each other, and she kind of like reveals some stuff about herself on how she feels about like the police force and doing, you know, what's right and basically trying to make Gotham a better place. I thought that was pretty cool. We also get to see that she kind of prefers to work alone. And it was a really cool scene. And eventually Batman starts getting in pain from his uh, stab wound and she goes to basically stitch him up some more. Or I'm not sure if you stitched up before, but she's basically uh, stitching up basically again as she says, what, you're bleeding again. <laughs> And Batman basically is trying to not accept help, but Detective Kai basically says that she wants to help him basically, and he's trying to figure out how he's going to get to Batman E to basically get some answers on why exactly they murdered Abyss or think that they murdered Abyss. And we get to see that Detective Kai basically tells uh, Bruce that um, they're locked up in our prison. That apparently, um, this prison was built by Lex Luthor with state-of-the-art security, and that she doubts that they get visiting hours. Um, and this is really funny, but at the same time, Detective Kaya says that this is going to be hard to do, especially since Batman's basically blind right now. And Batman says they're going to have to do it anyway, which just shows the type of character Batman is, and he's going to go try to do the impossible. So, while Batman and Ink are being transported, and they themselves think, as one of the member states, that they're probably going to kill them off, um, all of them, the lights basically go off in uh, the prison, and the guards, I guess, are taken out one by one uh, by Batman, and Batman basically shows up and he talks to the Batman Ink members, wanting to know exactly what's going on, if they're working for Lex Luthor or what, like, what exactly is happening, and why do they think that they murdered Abyss and stuff. And he basically tells them that Abyss isn't dead and that they're all innocent men as they basically think they killed Abyss. That's why they basically turned themselves in to uh, the police basically. So I thought that was interesting. But the uh, Batman Eat members basically aren't having uh, it basically taking orders from Batman when he basically abandoned them in their eyes. And they basically all attack him at once basically. And we get to see Batman put up quite a fight for being blind so it shows his type of skill. But um, basically before uh, Batman can you know get the answers he wants on whenever he starts screaming you know stop this talk to me why would you work with Let's Luther? Um, it's revealed uh, that all the SWAT uh, member teams, like more of them, I guess, got called in or they figured out something was going on. They basically come in and they start firing their guns on the Batman Inc. members and Batman. So they basically run up to the rooftops to basically be picked up by Detective Kaya. And before they're able to get there uh, to Detective Kaya, uh, Batman's basically punched on the side of the head, um, through the, you know, on the side of the face, basically across the face. And uh, Detective Kaya basically grabs her gun as she says, you know, Batman, Batman, and she says, screw this. And uh, Batman says, whatever let's offer to you, we can fix it, just talk to me. And this is where uh, one of the members basically says, this is our case, Batman, you need to back off. And we get to see that Let's Luther basically uh, jumps up from uh, the floor right below um, the roof, basically the rooftop. And basically jumps up and Let's basically goes up to Batman and tells Batman that basically this was their plan to get, you know, him and Let's together uh, because they basically want to take him out or something like that. And that their only hope of stopping Abyss basically is if... Uh, Batman works for Let's and Batman's basically like freaks out and says you know what games are you playing Let's what did you do answer me and this where that mass member of Batman Inc says you don't get it Batman Let's might have funded our new Batman Inc and it's revealed that Abyss um, as he says but Abyss is our leader and Abyss says join us in the dark Batman and help us kill Let's Luthor so Abyss basically is the leader of Batman Inc and it's taken them under his wing basically now they follow him him. Um, and they basically want to kill Lex Luthor, and this will be revealed in the next portion of the story. But yeah. 
So Abyss basically tells Batman, because he's wondering how can Abyss be their leader, and Abyss basically tells uh, Batman that apparently um, Let's sent the team of uh, Batman Inc. to go kill Abyss, and when they basically went to kill him, he basically offered them something better, and that uh, taking down Let's Luthor once and for all, and I thought that was really cool. And we get to see basically Batman uh, fighting against Abyss, um, as well as Let's Luthor fighting against Batman Inc. And, um, you know, we have the cops basically, like, in these helicopters and stuff, and a full-on fight just breaks out, um, as we get to see that Abyss says that excellent, if you provide an audience, we can provide the show, and that Batman E, prove your loyalty, kill Let's Luthor, and the fight basically breaks out, and Let's Luthor is doing okay. But he's quickly overpowered by tons of these Batman Eat members, uh, considering that they should all be pretty good fighters. And since Batman basically like authorized them to kind of use his name in a way, they have to be great fighters. So Let's basically has no chance of beating these people. And before um, the fight can kind of like get really bad and people get hurt and stuff, Batman basically says, you know, to use a code club of heroes. And Abyss says, what does that mean? And it's revealed to us that Batman Eat was actually working as like a double agent type situation and they basically are still with Batman and that they basically played the role in trying to get um, Abyss basically to think that they were able to be persuaded to his side in order to capture him. So Abyss basically says that I had such hopes for us and we have so much in common and he basically starts uh, defeating all the different Batman Eat members and it shows how skilled Abyss is as it takes someone like Batman to basically take him down because he has had very good training and it's revealed to us during this fight scene with Abyss and the Batman Inc. members that apparently Lex Luthor actually created Abyss. And Abyss is basically an experiment from Lex Luthor to basically make his own Batman. And that he sent him to Badnesia to basically uh, be their Batman. And whenever he didn't have any use for him anymore, he basically hired Batman Inc. to basically kill him so that he couldn't be traced back to Lex Luthor. And and Let's Luther basically says, you know, lies and that, but uh, we know that, you know, this is actually the truth. And Abyss basically is about to kill Let's Luther by slicing his throat open, basically. Uh, but Detective Kaya basically saves him whenever she starts firing on Abyss. And Abyss makes his escape, basically, and we get to see that Batman talks to Let's Luther as Detective Kaya basically tells Batman, what now, Batman? that we can't let Abyss escape. And Let's Luther basically says, you know, what are you asking him for? He's just as lost in the dark as we are. And we get to see that Batman starts thinking about all the things he's been hearing lately, even like the flashbacks to Alfred and that. And I thought this was a really cool scene. And we get to see that um, Batman says that, Let's, I do need your help. And Let's basically says, finally, you come to your senses. And he's surprised when Batman breaks off part of his technology, um, the suit that he's wearing, basically that armor. He basically says, what, what are you doing? And that Batman says, you gave darkness to Abyss, a, a weapon I'm experienced with. So I'm bringing us both into the light. And I thought that was a really cool scene and really cool uh, panels by uh, the artist. And he basically tells them to uh, make sure that um, he says, let's take care of Batman Eat, don't let them get arrested. And try to tell your people to not follow Abyss, he's mine. So Batman goes off to deal with Abyss. So I thought that was really cool. And Abyss basically lands on the ground as he's uh, prowling the rooftops, basically just jumping from rooftop to rooftop. Eventually he lands on the ground starts walking but he starts getting uh, brought into the light by Batman's new uh, tet that he stole from Let's and as Batman says Luther wouldn't have given Abyss the powers he had if he didn't have a way to counteract it and this is where him and Abyss are seen in this type of light light uh, world but you know this is just the regular world but because of this device it brings them both into the light and all they can see is white and each other I guess so they basically get into a fight and you know Abyss basically tells Batman that he doesn't need any toys and he basically gets to uh, fight with him and it was a, it's a really cool fight and that you know 
this is how the, like like abyss says is this how you treat someone who's modeled themselves after he's not able to finish the sentence when batman basically lands a hit on him and that you know he calls abyss very good and that he uses the darkness as a crutch though um and abyss says as do you and he lands a type of smoke attack on batman but this actually gives batman his sight back he says that i can see and Abyss says good, you'll be able to see your life flash before your eyes. And this is where Batman shows his experience and that he's way above what Abyss is able to do. And just more skilled than Abyss. So he grabs Abyss's weapon with his bare hands before he can land a hit on him. He basically says you're done Abyss and he starts attacking him. And this is where we get a little more into Abyss's uh, characterization and that he says I only wanted to be like you Batman instead I'm always in the dark forever and he drops some type of like darkness bomb like a, it's kind of like this smoke this darkness smoke that envelops all the area around them I guess and allows Abyss to escape that or Batman let him escape as Abyss basically says alone and I really enjoyed this panel this whole page had really good art but I really enjoyed the panel with uh, Batman in the darkness with only his silhouette and the white eyes I thought that was really cool in the darkness smoke uh just really cool scene but batman basically heads off basically to go back home and that now that the threat is basically over and hopefully we see abyss in the future but it's revealed to us that the people that were kidnapped by abyss basically were he was trying to torture them by putting them into the darkness like himself but they never lost hope in that so he didn't really accomplish anything as they were able to find all the kidnapped people and none of them were killed or anything like that so it's basically a win for batman and company Batman and Detective Kaya basically saved the day. I really enjoyed that. And we get to see that Let's basically talking to Batman Inc. As he said, we had a deal I paid you. And they said that they never cast those chats and that. And that they're not going to work for someone like Let's Luther. And that they found out. They found a list of these experiments that Let's Luther did that were like Abyss. Basically, that I guess weren't successful. I think he was the only successful one. Uh, so now Abyss basically just out there um, by himself. So hopefully, we, like I said, we get to see him in a future story arc or something. Or storyline. But uh, Let's Luther basically says that there's no way they can prove it uh, to get him to go to prison. It's connect him with all of the Abyss, like, you know, uh, experiments and stuff like that, or Abyss himself. And Batman understands this as he basically, when the mask guy says, you know, the mask, um, Batman Inc. member says that he just gets to walk away and that. Uh, Batman says he's smart, careful, nothing connects him to Abyss. And just because Let's is going free doesn't mean he's happy about it because he lost his control over Batman Inc. as well as Abyss. So you know, now he's just, you know, by himself basically. So we'll see what happens with Let's Luther in the future. And yeah, that's basically it for Let's Luther in this story. We get to see that Batman praises Batman Inc. for staying strong and for basically doing a good job and playing uh, both sides basically to get the answers they needed on abyss and before batman leaves basically told by batman e that he's just gonna leave them again and that batman tells him that he's needed elsewhere but that he's gonna keep in touch with them and that he's gonna do a better job in making sure that he keeps in touch with his people and i thought that was a really cool a progression for batman's character and that he saw what went wrong here and that he should have kept an eye on the people that are using his name and making sure they stay on the right path so i thought that was really cool and we'll see if this dives into a future storyline um or story art you know uh with batman Inc. um and we'll see how the relationship goes uh, going forward hopefully they do a good job from this point on again and yeah so we go from that scene to batman basically back in gotham city um it says gotham city after arkham tower and batman basically meets a call to oracle and tells her that she was right that he's trying to work out on making sure that he celebrates the uh, the victories as well so oracle says no problem by batman and she basically uh clits off and we see that batman meets a call to ghostmaker basically says that he needs his help uh to keep watch on something for him and ghostmaker says i'm listening and we see a uh, clown hunter basically training in the background so i thought that was really cool seeing that him and clown maker still uh doing their training 
I'm guessing Clown Hunter is supposed to be like a Robin type uh, character for Ghostmaker in the future. They are going to give him a solo book, which is what a lot of people are hoping for. But yeah, um, going into the epilogue, we get to see different epilogues. And the first one shows us Detective Kaya basically trying to figure out what exactly Lex Luthor is doing with Abyss. And basically these experiments that apparently you made that were like Abyss that I guess weren't successful. So she's basically trying to figure out, you know, what uh, Lex Luthor is really up to. Epilogue 2 shows us Prometheus, and he says, Sir, our people have confirmed that Batman has returned to Gotham. And the guy that uh, Prometheus is talking to says, Good Prometheus, make sure my secret society monitors his movements. And this is where we are revealed to the person that Prometheus is talking to, which is Deathstroke. And he says, We need Batman distracted while we prepare for war. And it says to be continued in Shadow War uh, Alpha. And yeah, the next story arc is Shadow War. Shadow War just just concluded I think it was two days ago three days ago and I actually read the entire story arc in one go uh, yesterday so I will have the video out either Monday or Tuesday and yeah that was basically uh, the story and that was Batman the Abyss story arc by Joshua Williamson overall a really good story I really enjoyed the writing I enjoyed the artwork um, you know, um, as far as Abyss goes as a villain, I think it's very interesting uh, being a new villain that just debuted. Um, I think the bad story for his character being a creation of Lex Luthor to be his own version of Batman was great instead of just doing a lazy route and saying Lex Luthor is trying to be Batman himself. I thought that was way cooler that he would make something to try to be like that pinnacle of human uh expertise and like and how batman is in all these different areas and fields uh that was cool um the fact that abyss has this darkness power that can make people see only darkness was cool too kind of goes with his name being abyss and overall the story in general was just really good it felt like a detective story i think joshua williamson does a really good job in that aspect when it comes to batman's character whereas uh james Dean the fourth is very good at doing like just a flat out plot he's very good at plot based stories and you know uh the action is great by jorge jimenez i don't think he did the art for this story art um he's going to be doing the art for i think the chip sadarsky run that's about to drop i think next week or in two weeks from now um yeah so like i'm hyped for that but overall the abyss story art was great uh joshua williamson as always usually draws very good uh stories he's always one of the best in the comic book uh, game right now so um i was looking forward to this story art when i heard about it when it was coming out but um you know i wasn't reading uh modern comets for a bit um i had taken a break for a few months but um during those months we had this story art as well as fear state and that so it was a joy to be able to just binge read uh these story arts and i do recommend you go check out this uh story the you know the storyline slash story art i will have a lean structure down below to check it out legally on amazon slash comicsology and don't miss out in a few days when we cover the Shadow War story arc, which will be the final story arc uh, to get caught up to modern as we're going to be going into the new Chips of Darcy and Jorge Jimenez uh, run, which didn't start off with Batman Failsafe. So you do definitely want to check out uh, Shadow War so that you can be caught up to what's happening in uh, the most recent uh, Batman uh, issues and stuff like that uh, storyline. Um, you know, so that you're caught up for the new storyline that's about to drop. And yeah, so overall, if you're new to the channel, be sure to subscribe as we cover full stories, as well as the issues when they're coming out on the channel. We will be covering Batman Fail Safe as it's coming out. And um, I hope you guys enjoy that. Uh, we also review different comic books such as Thor, Hulk, um, Iron Man, and Spider-Man. As well as Action Comets, which features Superman right now. As well as other uh, stories that I might be talking about, which are like older books and stuff that isn't modern. We cover that type of stuff on the channel too. And we mainly review trade paperbacks slash uh, volumes on the channel. Uh, but we do cover modern comic uh, issues that are coming out um, weekly, bi-weekly, monthly, whatever um, it is as well on the channel. But that's going to be all guys to this video. God bless you. Until next lesson, keep on reading those comments.